Hello, welcome back to my channel. In my last video on biochemical reactions, we covered the catalase test, coagulase and oxidase test. Today we will cover indole production test, methyl red test, Vogue's Prosker test, citrate utilization test. These four are also known as the IMVIC tests. We will also cover urease, sugar fermentation and triple sugar iron test in this video. Beginning with the IMVIC tests. The first test is the indole production test. This detects the presence of tryptophanase enzyme in the bacteria. Tryptophanase utilizes tryptophan in the broth and produces indole in this process. Presence of indole can be detected by adding COVAX reagent to the broth. Formation of red colored ring on the top of the broth is suggestive of indole production by a bacterium that produces tryptophanase enzyme. So let's see the procedure for indole test. This test is performed in a test tube containing liquid broth that is rich in tryptophan. The broth is inoculated with a colony of the bacterium to be tested and then incubated for 24 to 48 hours at 38 degrees Celsius. After the incubation is completed, 0.5 ml of COVAX reagent is added by the side of the test tube. Formation of red ring shows indole positive organism. No formation of red ring or formation of yellow ring shows indole negative organisms. Indole positive bacteria and indole negative bacteria are shown here for your reference. Next test is methyl red or MR test. Some bacteria ferment glucose into pyruvic acid that is converted by mixed acid pathway into stable acids like lactic acid, formic acid and acetic acid in large quantities thus decreasing the pH of the medium significantly. Methyl red indicator changes its color at a considerably lower pH than the other indicators used in other culture media. That is why this test is also considered a quantitative test for acid production requiring the organisms to produce strong and stable acids in quantities sufficient to maintain low pH for 24 to 48 hours while resisting the acid buffers in the media. Addition of methyl red indicator changes the color of medium to red in the presence of acidic pH. Now coming to the procedure, the methyl red test is performed in glucose phosphate broth also called as MRVP broth with a neutral pH of 7.6. The broth is inoculated with a bacterial colony and incubated at 37 degrees for 24 to 48 hours. After completion of the incubation process, we add 5 drops of methyl red indicator into the test tube. Development of red color indicates positive methyl red test. Yellow color indicates a negative methyl red test. Examples of methyl red positive and negative organisms are shown here. Next we move on to Vogue's Prosker test also called VP test. Some bacteria metabolize pyruvic acid into the acetoin compound as the chief end product of glucose metabolism and they do not form stable acids and therefore have a negative MR test. In the presence of atmospheric oxygen and 40% potassium hydroxide and 5% alpha naphthol, this acetoin is converted to diacetyl. The guanidino group present in the MRVP broth under alkaline condition reacts with the diacetyl to form a pinkish red colored complex. Procedure for VP test. We take a test tube having the glucose phosphate broth. It is incubated with the test colony and kept for incubation at 37 degrees centigrade for 24 to 48 hours. At the end of incubation, add 0.6 ml of 5% alpha naphthol. Now add 0.2 ml of 40% potassium hydroxide. It is essential that the reagents be added in this order. Shake the tube gently to expose the medium to atmospheric oxygen and allow the tube to remain undisturbed for 10 to 15 minutes. Development of red color indicates positive VP test and no color change indicates a negative test. Usually the organisms that are MR positive are VP negative. 
and vice versa because of the different metabolic pathways used to utilize glucose. Therefore, these tests are done in conjunction with each other. Some examples of VP positive and negative tests are given here. Next test is the citrate utilization test. Some bacteria can obtain energy in a manner other than by the fermentation of carbohydrates by using citrate as the sole source of carbon. The measurement of this characteristic is important in the identification of many members of the family Enterobacteriaceae. The medium must be devoid of protein and carbohydrates as a source of carbon. The utilization of citrate by a test bacterium is detected in citrate medium by the production of sodium bicarbonate and ammonia which results in the alkaline pH of the medium. Bromothymol blue indicator in the medium changes its color from dark green to blue at an alkaline pH indicating citrate utilization as shown in the picture. To perform the citrate utilization test, we take a test tube having the Simon citrate agar in a slot. This agar contains sodium citrate and the indicator bromothymol blue that appears dark green at neutral pH. The slant is inoculated with the test bacterial colony and then incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 to 48 hours. If the agar slant turns blue after incubation, it is indicative of formation of carbonate and bicarbonate by the citrate utilizing bacteria. Negative reaction is suggested by no growth and no color change. That is, the slant remains green in color. Some examples of citrate positive and negative bacteria are given here for your reference. So these were the four tests that are part of imbic reactions. They include indole production, methyl red, Vogue's prosker and citrate utilization tests. These are used mainly for differentiating among the members of family Enterobacteriaceae. Some examples are given here. Ishirichia coli gives plus plus minus minus result for the imbic reaction. Salmonella species gives minus plus minus plus whereas Klebsiella species gives minus minus plus plus result for imbic reaction. So now moving on to the sugar fermentation test. Some bacteria are selective in their preference for sugar utilization. Their sugar preference can help us differentiate them from each other. So, we grow the bacteria in the presence of one particular sugar, for example, lactose. The lactose fermenting bacteria will produce acid with or without gas formation. The pH of the broth turns acidic in the presence of lactose fermenting bacteria that changes the color of the media. Presence of NRAIDS indicator changes the color of the medium to pink in the presence of acid as shown in this picture. Gas formation is detected by the presence of bubble in the inverted Durham's tube. Non-lactose fermenting bacteria will show no color change in the medium. Procedure for sugar utilization test. We take a test tube containing the basal medium with a single sugar in it. In this example, the sugar taken is lactose. The medium also contains an inverted Durham's tube and a pH indicator, which in this example is Andrade's indicator. The tube is then inoculated with a colony from the test bacterium and incubated at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 to 48 hours. Presence of acidic pH is shown by the development of pink color in the broth, so the test organism can ferment lactose. We can also see bubble formation in the Durham's tube indicative of fermentation of lactose with production of gas. An example is E. coli that can ferment lactose and produce pink color as well as the formation of gas in the Durham's tube. No change in the color is indicative of non-fermenting bacterium for that particular sugar. An example here is Salmonella species that is non-lactose fermenter. The same test can be repeated using different sugars. Next test is the urea hydrolysis or urease test. 
Urease is an enzyme possessed by many species of microorganisms that can hydrolyze urea to form ammonia and carbon dioxide. The ammonia forms ammonium carbonate resulting in alkaline pH in the medium. We use phenol red indicator in the urease test that changes its color from yellow to pink in the alkaline medium. Let's see the procedure for urease test. We take a test tube containing Christensen's urea agar slant containing urea and phenol red indicator at a neutral pH. Phenol red appears pale yellow at a neutral pH. We inoculate the slant with the bacterial colony of the test organism and incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for 24 to 48 hours. Change in the color of agar slant to pink after the completion of incubation is indicative of production of ammonia by urease producing bacteria that is called positive urease test. Example of urease positive organism are given in this table. No change in the color of the agar slant after incubation is called urease negative test. The medium remains original yellow colored. These are the examples of urease negative organism. So that was all about urease test. Now triple sugar iron agar or TSI agar. It is a solid medium in a tube with two parts, a butt in the bottom and a slant on the side of the tube. Ideally, both should be 3 cm in length. It is used to differentiate members of the family Enterobacterium. The butt provides relatively anaerobic environment and the slant is exposed to air and provides aerobic environment. TSI contains three fermentable carbohydrates, glucose, lactose, sucrose that acts as differentiating agents. The pH indicator used is phenol red that is yellow at pH of 6.8 and pink at a pH of 8.4. TSI is buffered at a pH of 7.4 and production of relatively small quantities of acid result in visible color change. It also has thiosulfate and iron to detect H2S production. Also the TSI agar is very rich in nutrition by the presence of beef extract, yeast extract, peptone and protease. It grows most bacterial species so it should be used for testing bacterial species selected from a single pure colony. Carbohydrates are evenly distributed through the slant and butt of the tube and the concentration of lactose to sucrose to glucose is 10 is to 10 is to 1. TSI agar should be used mainly for differentiation of members of family Enterobacteriaceae. Before using TSI agar on fermenting bacteria, the cytochrome oxidase test should be performed to differentiate other genera of fermenting bacteria such as Aeromonas, Plesiomonas, Vibrio, Pastorella species that are oxidase positive. It is advisable not to do TSI for oxidase positive fermenting bacteria as it saves time and money. The slant is inoculated with a long straight wire. The process called a stab and while removing wire from the stab, the slant is streaked with the back and forth motion. Media is incubated after inoculation. We can see four types of visible reactions in the TSI agar that includes yellow color production by the sugar fermenting bacteria, pink color by non-fermenting bacteria, black discoloration mainly in the butt by H2S producing bacteria, and disruption of the media in butt region by the gas producing bacteria. Various combination of these four reactions can be seen. Let us see some examples. The non-carbohydrate fermenters that will utilize peptone in the medium and produce amines making the medium alkaline indicated by the pink color throughout the medium. Example is Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Some bacteria ferment glucose but do not ferment lactose and sucrose. Glucose is present in limited quantities. So in the first 8 to 12 hours, the glucose is fermented throughout the butt and the slant producing acid and therefore change in the color of the medium to yellow. In the next few hours, 
the glucose supply is exhausted and bacteria in the slant switch to the oxidative degradation of amino acids and releases amines thus changing the ph and color of the slant back from yellow to pink by 18 to 24 hours the butt however remains yellow because there is no oxygen to support oxidative degradation of amino acids in the deep butt example of such a bacterium is shigella species that is glucose fermenter but not lactose or sucrose fermenter some bacteria ferment glucose only but they also produce h2s in addition so they will have yellow media at 8 to 12 hours that will turn pink at the slant at 18 to 24 hours and the butt develops black color by h2s production example of such bacteria are salmonella and proteus species the lactose and sucrose fermenting bacteria have sufficient supply of these sugars throughout the medium the medium is uniformly yellow at 8 to 12 hours Yersinia enterocolitica is a sucrose fermenter but does not ferment lactose. It has sufficient sucrose throughout the medium so media is uniformly yellow after 18 to 24 hours. Some bacteria can utilize all the three sugars that is lactose, sucrose and glucose. These are likely to produce profuse carbon dioxide in the medium and can even disrupt the medium. Example of such bacterium is E. coli. So that was all about the biochemical tests for now. Hope you like the video. Please like, subscribe, share and comment. Thank you for watching.